Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session of Spokane Public Schools Keep Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our first graders out there, and any child who is interested is welcome to join us. My name is Katie Jensen, and I'm a reading interventionist and literacy coach at Stevens Elementary in Spokane Schools, and I will be your teacher for this lesson. I'm so glad you're here participating with me today. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it on the KSPS website. You can still tune into today's lesson if you haven't seen any of our others. Today, we will be learning about making inferences and predictions. For today's lesson, you'll need a piece of paper and a writing utensil. I'll give you a couple of moments to gather your supplies. Let's get started. This week's story is by Wong Herbert Yi. He loves to write and draw. His daughter loves rabbits, so he tries to put a rabbit in every story he writes. Love is a feeling. People have lots of different feelings about things. Can you name some feelings that you may feel during the day? You may have said angry, happy, sad, scared. In this story, we're going to read to find out how you can help a friend that feels sad. As we read, we're going to practice predicting what will happen next in a story. When we're making a prediction, we're making a good guess about what will happen next using pictures and what we know. So making a prediction is to use clues to guess what will happen next. For example, you already know a lot about apple trees from reading a tree is a plant. That might help you understand more about the apple tree in our story today. Another thing we're going to be practicing is making what's called an inference. An inference in, is when you have to make a good guess about what's happening now in the story using pictures and what you know. So making an inference is to use clues and what you already know to make a good guess about what is happening now. Let's practice using a story that we've already read. Do you remember our story from last week, Creepy Carrots? Our character, Jasper Rabbit, is eating all of the carrots in Krakenhopper Field. And we learned some new things about those carrots and how they feel about it. When we got to this point in the story, it was towards the beginning. Using what I've read so far in this book and the pictures, I might make a prediction about what might happen next in the story. I see that the carrots look angry. And I see that Jasper has been taking a lot of the carrots, so I could make a prediction that what will happen next is that the carrots are going to come up with a plan to stop Jasper from eating all of the carrots. If I were to make an inference on this page, I could infer that the carrots are angry. I think that they're angry because I see their faces and I know that when someone is angry, their brows furrow, which means that our eyebrows kind of go inward. I see that their eyes are crooked down and they're frowning. They almost look like they're growling. So I can make an inference that the carrots are feeling angry. Let's go ahead and practice making inferences and predictions with this week's story. Little Rabbit's Tale by Wong Herbert Yi, illustrated by Richard Bernal. Little Rabbit sleeps under an old apple tree. Just then, the wind starts to blow. The branches shift in the wind. Thump! 
something hits little rabbit. The author chose here to use the word something instead of what actually fell on little rabbit. Can you use the pictures and what you already know to make a prediction about what that something was? You can even think about what you already know about apple trees to help you make a good guess about what that something might be. Let's read to see if you're right. Oh no, the sky is falling, yells Little Rabbit. I've got to try to tell everyone. Little Rabbit hops off to find Goose. When we look at this page, we might start to make an inference about what's happening right now. What I can infer from this picture is how Little Rabbit might be feeling. What do you think he's feeling? You may have said scared, but what clues from the text and from the pictures let you know that he's scared? It looks like he's running and his eyes are wide open with worry. In the text, it says that he goes, oh no. Someone who's scared might say something like that. Those are inferences about what's happening right now in the story. Goose sits in his rowboat. The tip of his rod starts to twitch. There's no time to fish, yells Little Rabbit. The sky is falling. Let's go, Little Rabbit. We need to go tell Beaver. Goose and Little Rabbit use the rowboat. They go up the stream. What do you predict they're going to tell Beaver? Think about what's already happened in the story. Can you find clues to help you figure out what they're going to tell Beaver? Let's go back in our story and look at one of our first pages. Remember, Little Rabbit says, I've got to try to tell everyone. What is he telling them? That's right, that the sky is falling. So maybe our prediction is that they're going to also go tell Beaver that the sky is falling. Let's see if we're right. Goose peeks inside. Beaver is eating a snack. There's no time to eat, says Goose. Let's go. The sky is falling. Looks like our prediction was correct. Oh my, says Beaver. We need to go tell Turtle. Beaver, Goose, and Little Rabbit dash up the hill. So I'm going to make a prediction right now, too, that they are going to go tell Turtle, and I think he's also going to believe them. And what makes me think that is that Goose and Rabbit told Beaver, and Beaver didn't ask any questions. He just believed them that the sky was falling. So I think that Turtle is also just going to believe them without asking any questions. Turtle sleeps under a log. Tap, tap. Beaver taps on Turtle's shell. Turtle peeks out. There's no time to sleep, says Beaver. Let's go. The sky is falling. Oh, no, yells Turtle. What can we do? Let's run back home, says Little Rabbit. I want to tell my mother. So it looks like Turtle does believe them just like Beaver did without asking any questions. On this page, let's stop and make an inference. At the beginning of the story, we were able to infer that Rabbit was worried or scared. When I hear our character yell, oh no, and say, let's run back home, I infer that they are scared and worried just like Little Rabbit was at the beginning of the story. What do you do when you feel scared or worried? I predict that they are running home to tell a grown-up. You may want to talk to an adult just like these characters do. Little Rabbit says, I want to tell my mother. 
So it sounds like they're going to an adult for help. Turtle, beaver, goose, and little rabbit run fast. They hop over the log, dash down the hill, and jump into Goose's rowboat. Then they go as fast as they can down the stream. So remember, they're on their way to Little Rabbit's mother. Now, so far throughout the story, all of our characters have listened to and believed Little Rabbit when he says the sky is falling. Do you think Little Rabbit's mother will believe him? What do you predict? What will Little Rabbit's mother say? Let's read to find out. Little Rabbit hops in the door. Mother, the sky is falling. Who told you such a thing? Asks Mother Rabbit. Beaver told me, says Turtle. Goose told me, says Beaver. Little Rabbit told me, says Goose. Well, let's just go outside and look at the sky, says Mother Rabbit. Were your predictions correct about what Little Rabbit's mother would do? Did she do what you thought she would? Just then, the wind starts to blow. The branches shift in the wind. Thump. Something hits Little Rabbit. Oh no, another thump. Think about the last time you saw the author use this word. Can you infer what made that sound? Oh no, the sky is falling, yells Little Rabbit. The sky is not falling, laughs Mother Rabbit. An apple just fell from the apple tree. Was your inference correct? Did you say that it was an apple? I didn't get to catch a fish, says Goose. I didn't get to eat my snack, says Beaver. I didn't get to sleep, says Turtle. Look at this picture of our characters. Can you infer how these characters may be feeling? What in the picture makes you think that? What about the words in the text? Remember at the beginning of the story when I said we were going to learn how to help a friend who feels sad? Do you have a prediction on how Little Rabbit is going to help his friends who feel sad? What would you do? I've got a plan, says Little Rabbit. Can my friends eat with us? Yes, says Mother Rabbit. Go wash your hands while I get more plates. Hooray! What feeling do the characters have on this page? They look pretty excited and happy. I can make that inference by seeing they are jumping up and down and they've got big smiles on their faces. The words in the text also help me make that inference. Hooray is something I would say when I'm happy or excited about something. Little Rabbit has a nice meal with his friends. After that, they all have homemade apple treats. The friends lived happily ever after. Was this story real or make-believe? It has some of the same characteristics that we found in Frog and Toad. The animals act like humans, making it a fantasy make-believe story. There was also a lesson in this story. Little Rabbit learned to have courage even when the sky is falling. Can you think of something Little Rabbit did that was brave? Running to warn his friends was brave. Feeling brave when things get scary can be hard. Did a little rabbit have a solution to make his friends feel better at the end of the story? He made them feel better by inviting them over for dinner and giving them yummy fruit pies. 
Goose, Beaver, and Turtle also learned a lesson. They all followed Little Rabbit when he told them the sky was falling. None of them actually saw the sky falling, though. Why is it important to not believe everything you hear? Throughout our story, we made predictions and inferences. Can you remember one of the predictions that we made? One prediction I made was around the word thump. I made a prediction about what that sound could have been. I used text evidence from the story. I saw that little rabbit was laying underneath a tree and it looked like something red was falling on him. So using the picture clues and my knowledge about different types of trees, I was able to predict that an apple fell on him and made that thump sound. Then at the end, I was able to confirm my prediction when mother rabbit says, the sky is not falling. It was just an apple falling from the tree. I can also make inferences in my story. Do you remember an inference that we made throughout those texts? One inference that I made was I used what I already knew. So I knew that when someone feels scared or afraid, sometimes their mouth is wide open and they have big eyes. So using what was in the book, I saw that Little Rabbit had big eyes, and that's what I used to make the inference that Little Rabbit is afraid. For today's activity, you have two choices of what you will write about. Your first choice is to answer this question. What lesson did you learn from Little Rabbit's tale? Another choice is to write a letter to Little Rabbit. What can you tell him that will make him feel better about his mistake? What should Little Rabbit have done instead? Throughout your writing, I want you to make sure you're checking for a couple of important things. Here's a checklist that you can use. I call it my five-star writing checklist. This means I should have a capital letter to start my sentence. Of course, there are a couple of other words that need capital letters at the beginning. Do you remember what they are? We need a capital letter for the word I. We need a capital letter at the beginning of our sentence. And we need capital letters for names. Another star that you need to make sure you include is punctuation at the end of your sentence. If you're asking a question, there should be a question mark. If it's a statement, there should be a period. Or if there's an exclamation, someone is shouting or excited, you might use an exclamation point. Another important feature is to make sure you have finger spaces. When our words don't have finger spaces, it's really hard for a reader to read our writing. And that's the whole purpose of writing, so that someone can read it. We need to make sure our finger spaces show our readers the different words in our sentences. And then we also need to make sure that we have neat handwriting and phonetic spelling. What that means is that when we are sounding out words that are big that we don't know, that we're really listening to sound out every single sound we know. So if I'm sounding out beaver, I'm going to stretch it out nice and slow. Beaver. And I'll write down every word I know. With that, sight words that we do know need to be spelled correctly. At the end, to get that fifth star, you need to reread your writing and make sure that it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, it needs to be fixed so that our reader can understand our writing. I have enjoyed doing some literacy learning with you today. Thank you for joining me as you keep learning from home. I look forward to seeing you again for our next lesson. Mm -hmm.